My name is Christina, and along with Caitlin, we'll be talking about a motivation plan, talk about the background of the company, the challenges associated with this motivation plan, and then some suggestions that we think would help improve this motivation plan and its outcomes. So some background on the company. We'll be evaluating a family medicine clinic. Uh, primarily this uh, motivation plan was directed toward primary care physicians in satellite clinics around rural North Carolina. According to Drucker, primary care physicians are higher level of knowledge workers. So their professional motivation is really uh, valued with intrinsic motivation. They value building relationships with patients. They want to improve their clinician skills through continued education and really making an impact on their community around them. And they value autonomy, autonomy in running their own clinics. Each clinic really has its own kind of characteristics and qualities depending on the people that come to it. So it's really important for each physician to direct and organize their clinics appropriate with their clientele. The current motivation plan says that a physician in their clinic must see 10 patients per half day. And if they do not meet this quota, then 17% of their salary is at risk. And this is in addition to a lot of their other responsibilities, such as teaching in the medical school, um, other additional hospital services, such as helping um, inpatients, as well as being on call. And these sessions typically range from six to nine per week for each physician. There are both positive and negative outcomes of our current motivation, motivational plan. The positive outcomes are that the number of patients we're seeing in our clinics has increased, and we have also improved our bottom line with the revenue that has been generated from the increase in patients. However, there are some adverse effects of this plan as well. Um, the first being the quality of the patient relationship with their physician. With the increase in number of patients coming to the clinic, it results in a decrease in the amount of time the physician can spend with their patients and thus uh, less time to build that relationship together. Um, second, there has been a decrease in job satisfaction as resulted in increase in physician turnover in our primary care clinics. Finally, um, because of the goal to have 10 patients per half day, um, physicians are double booking patients in case a patient ends up not coming. So there are longer wait times for patients. Um, the uh, visit time has decreased significantly, and this has all resulted in an increase in patient frustration. So let's go over some challenges of the current motivation plan. First, as management, we have taken the short-term view versus the long-term view. Short-term view, inc uh, improve the bottom line, increase number of patients coming to our clinics. However, we have forgotten to see how this can affect us in the long run. Um, pay, uh, physician turnover will be a huge expense for us if we don't um, address job satisfaction as well as loss of patients as they continue to be frustrated by the time constraints we can see now an even larger decrease in patients coming to our clinics. Um, second, as Pink discusses in Drive, um, it, extrinsic motivation plans like the if-then reward structure that we are using here um, can really reduce the depth of our critical thinking and our autonomy. Having these constraints on physicians for how they run their clinics can um, have a consequence, a damaging consequence on their performance over time as well as their um, critical thinking. You know, when a patient comes in, they look at the um, objective cues such as vitals, um, blood pressure, pulse, but they also look at some of the subjective, subjective cues like tears in their eyes, um, home life, um, anxiety in their voice, and so a lot of those subjective type of cues are lost when time constraints are increased and they're not able to take the time to talk with their patients and really uh, gain a relationship long-term relationship with them. Um, 
Finally, as stated previously, our physicians tend to be type I or intrinsically motivated, um, concerned less with external rewards and more with the satisfaction that comes from their job and helping their community. And using an if-then reward structure presents a challenge because it is effective for extrinsically motivated individuals, but can be damaging for intrinsically motivated individuals such as our physicians. And so we need to find a motivation plan that really aligns with the type of work our physicians are performing. And so now Caitlin will go over some solutions to our current motivation plan. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Caitlin and now that Christina has identified some of the challenges that we face in our current plan, um, I would like to talk more about our proposed solutions. So we've identified a three-step plan for creating a stronger motivation plan that focuses on intrinsic motivation among physicians. Step one, we'd like to assess our current plan at the physician level. This will provide us with valuable information as we move forward in crafting our new message. Step two, we'd like to include physicians in the development of our new plan, um, specifically at the area of setting goals. And step three, we'd like to change the reward structure for physicians to promote more type I behavior as opposed to type X behavior. So first step to our solution is to conduct an autonomy audit. Uh, Daniel Pink discusses um, this and offers this as a a suggestion in the book Drive. Um, particularly, Pink discusses how people want autonomy over task, time, technique, and team, and that if we're able to give physicians auto levels of autonomy in each of these four areas, that will have increased job satisfaction, ultimately leading to higher performance and better patient care. So you may ask, why is autonomy important? So autonomy um, is particularly important for the kind of work that physicians are doing. Um, so the work of a physician requires highly, high critical thinking skills, um, a great deal of creativity, um, and the ability to respond, to adapt to different situations. And so by giving physicians auto autonomy, we are encouraging them to invest in the work that they're doing and to seek out um, their own motivation internally from the work. And so the, uh, having autonomy ultimately means having the ability to make your own decisions um, and set your own path. And through that process, intrinsic motivation is increased. So how we would conduct the autonomy audit is to first ask physicians to rank their autonomy in each area, task, time, technique, and team. Additionally, we would have management rank their perception of physician autonomy in each of these areas and then compare our results. Um, this should show us um, how much autonomy physicians believe that they have. Um, and additionally, it may show us areas where perceptions of management differ from those of physicians. Um, and so we would be able to use this information to identify our strengths and areas of improvement as it relates to autonomy. Second part of our solution is to incorporate physicians in determining new self-directed goals for each of the clinics. So our current plan sets a um, desired amount of patients uh, to, the, to see in a day at a management level. And that goal is imposed by management onto physicians. This has caused um, some considerable backlash within the physician community um, and has resulted in lower job satisfaction among many physicians. Alternatively, on our new solution, we would like to propose that management partner with physicians to determine these goals. Physicians are the ones who are on the ground every day. Um, they're meeting with patients. They understand the ins and outs of patient care and are best suited to establish specific goals um, that are individual to each of the clinics. Management then can work with the physicians to identify what the metrics would be to um, measure achievement of these goals. After having gathered information about our current state of autonomy um, and then working with physicians to give some, them back some of that additional autonomy through help, having them create self-directed goals, um, we then need, want to turn to how we reward um, success within our organization. So our current plan has an if-then consequence structure. Um, so prior to uh, physicians seeing patients and providing care, uh, management has expressed to physicians that if they fail to meet certain standards, um, then they are at risk for losing up to 17% of their salary. Um, 
there's two main problems with this. First, um, the entire focus is on consequences and on negative consequences. Um, it does not at all discuss um, the rewards um, for physicians who do in turn meet their uh, desired metrics. Secondly, um, it uses the if-then structure. The if-then structure, as discussed by uh, Pink in the book Drive, um, is, works well for type X behavior. Uh, it works well to promote um, motivation and tasks that are relatively simple um, and that do not require extensive critical thinking. Um, as we can all agree, um, the work of a physician um, is quite opposite of that. It requires extensive critical thinking and a lot of creativity um, on a daily basis. And so, um, as Pink discusses, that kind of behavior um, is most is better motivated um, through a now that reward structure. So instead of presenting an reward or a consequence before the action or before the desired behavior occurs, um, you allow physicians to intrinsically motivate themselves toward reaching this goal, and then you reward um, with praise, recognition, etc., um, physicians who have met and exceeded their metrics. So this change in a reward structure not only shifts away from a um, negative consequence-based conversation to a rewards one, but it also better aligns um, our reward structure with the type of work that physicians are doing, um, specifically designed to move away from a reward structure that promotes type X behavior and instead move to a reward structure that promotes type I behavior and intrinsic motivation. So to recap, our plan has three different components. First, we'll conduct an autonomy audit. Second, we would allow physicians to create self-directed goals. And third, we would establish a now that reward structure. You may ask, how do we know that this is going to work? Um, so first step um, is to provide a data-driven foundation for change. Anytime we want to make substantive changes, we want to make sure that we have a solid foundation of information as to where our areas of improvement are, and the autonomy audit provides us with some of this information. Second, um, the, our new plan is based on the expectancy theory of motivation. And so the expectancy theory of motivation states that motivation is a function of um, valence times instrumentality times expectancy. And so what we have done with this new plan is increase valence and expectancy. So by allowing physicians to create self-directed goals, we're increasing expectancy because we are increasing their confidence and their ability to meet the metrics um, that are set by management. We increase valence by moving from the if-then consequence structure to a now that reward structure. We have now provided physicians with something to work towards, something to strive for. Um, and we've given by identifying a uh, percentage-based bonus plan, um, we are also providing them with a reward that is worth their investment of energy, thereby increasing valence. Instrumentality is going to be critical as well to the success of this plan. Um, so any reward structure, any bonus packages that we do propose offer, um, we would need to make sure that they are fiscally responsible for our practice um, and that our physicians would be confident that we could deliver on this reward. So in conclusion, um, we believe that our current plan fails to promote positive outcomes for our clinics. Um, particularly, we're concerned about the long-term success of our practice um, and if changes are not made. So we believe that our solutions will help develop um, more intrinsic motivation among our physicians, um, thereby ultimately increasing their job satisfaction and allowing us to retain more physicians and provide better quality service to our patients. Uh, thank you for uh, talking with us today, um, and we look forward to hearing your feedback.